I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about, I don't think my ex cares at all. You may be in a situation where your ex is acting like they don't care about you in any way, shape, or form. In fact, they may even be giving off a vibe like they never cared about you at all. This happens a lot more often than you would think, and it's sad that people are emotionally stunted and immature about ending a relationship, okay? Many people have attachment issues. Most people have some attachment issues, right? There are f very few people in this world that are absolutely, truly secure. You have to have a great childhood with really emotionally attentive, loving parents, family, not had trauma, you know, or significant traumas, to really be in that place. Unfortunately, I wish there were a lot more secure people in this world because they handle things with a lot more patience and love and understanding. But when people grew up in a home where their parents were negligent, they were toxic, abusive, mean, selfish, they tend to do a lot of the same of the behaviors that their parents did, especially in the breakup, right? Because many people can be selfish and selfish in a relationship. And when they're in a breakup, they become even more selfish. I wish more people were empathetic and compassionate and understanding, but that's just not how most people are. And I've seen thousands of breakups over the years. So I'm telling you, if your ex is cold and mean and acting like they don't care, oftentimes it's temporary. Now, some people will have this black and white thinking of, oh, you get rid of me, that's it, we're done, I'm never taking you back. Hey, look, you can live the life you wanna do. But I can tell you, I've seen many people break up over the years. The person acted selfish for a while, but at some point their feelings change and they really realize things. You know, people say, you don't know what you got until, the, until it's gone. And I really believe that. Many people don't truly value what they have. Now, I'm a big believer in treating people great for as long as you can. And if they neglect that or they don't appreciate that, that's on them. But I really think you should try and live with integrity and be proud of the person that you are. Most people won't live like that. And that is what I wish for all of you to have love and compassion and understanding and empathy for as many people as you can, right? Because that really changes the world. But you are probably in a situation where your ex is acting really cold and acting like they don't care. In fact, they sometimes act like well, I never really wanted this and you were the one that pushed for it. And, and they distort reality and they will gaslight. And some of that is just because you're pushing. If you're pushing them and they can't really give you healthy reasons as to why it ended or honest reasons, they don't want to give you honest reasons, they're going to distort reality and gaslight you a bit. So if that is happening, you have to back off and understand they're not in the place to be talking about those things. And pushing them is only going to make things worse. Okay? So, I got an email coaching today from somebody that feels like their ex doesn't care at all. Why? Because he's acting like he doesn't care at all. Will he always act like he doesn't care at all? I don't think so. It does happen. But this is why I say every situation is different. Uh, let's get into this email coaching and see why she's feeling like this. She says, hi, Coach Craig. 
Me and my ex broke up in August after a four-year relationship. We have never gone through a breakup like this before. Now we've been living together for three of those four years. I'm in my mid to late thirties and he's slightly younger. I have never felt love like we had and he was my best friend and everything in my life revolved around him and us. I even moved to the part of the country that he's from for him. The last year we were arguing over silly things, but we argued a lot and this created us not becoming as close physically or emotionally leading up to the breakup. Now this is a huge part to the situation. Okay. I don't know the details of these arguments, but I'm willing to bet that a lot of it had to do with the anxious avoidant trap that we often talk about and poor communication. I'm not saying it's necessarily on him or her, but they both created it together. Now, when we start to fight and argue about those things and don't really understand each other, then we don't want to be physically close with the other person and the intimacy and the bond and the strength of that connection weakens to the point where one person is just like, I don't really know how much I want to do this anymore. And then they start to look elsewhere for other options. And that's just what most people are going to do. Now, the healthiest people in the world will not do that, but a lot of people will. The more issues you have and the more insecure you are, the more likely you're going to handle it that way, as opposed to really dealing with the issue. And then if it's not working, moving forward. I suggested counseling and at first he was receptive, but then said no, because he didn't want to pay for someone to tell us we don't get along. <laughs> yes, that's what we do as therapists. You come into us, you tell us your story and we say, you know, I don't think you guys have been getting along. So we'll see you next week. <laughs> it's such a ridiculous concept of a therapist and what we actually do in therapy. Now, maybe there are some bad therapists out there that would do something like that. But remember, there are going to be bad uh, people in every field. Doctors, lawyers, teachers, any field is going to have somebody that isn't as skilled or qualified. And that's just what happens, unfortunately. Uh, but I don't want to pay for people to tell us we don't get along. That's a new one for me. Instead of trying to work on our issues and communication, he ended it with me. Then I had to move back with my family who's about five hours away from him and where we live together. He said he needs to work on himself as there were several life circumstances that were difficult. I already know. I already could sense that this was not, this was him up to no good. You know, when you've done this for a long time, you pick up on little things here and there, right? Just like any profession. I left in early September, but as of the end of October, maybe sooner, he's already in a relationship with someone new. Obviously, I'm devastated and struggling to cope. That is totally understandable and that is how most of us feel when it happens to us. So please just understand it is a part of the process. Feeling abandoned and left for somebody else is incredibly painful. He was responding to my messages up until the last week of September, but now he's blocked me on all platforms. Why? Well, because I think he's in La La Land. He is in this delusional state where people are like a drug addict for the new person. The new person looks perfect and wonderful and amazing and is going to meet all their dreams and fantasies. But that simply isn't how romantic relationships go. It doesn't usually last for very long. Now, why did he block her? Hiding things, 
maybe didn't want to hurt her, probably more for selfish reasons, didn't want her to see, didn't want her to cause drama. Maybe he didn't want her reaching out to this other ex and causing drama with her, or, sorry, this other new girlfriend, causing any drama with her. I appreciate any advice and help you will give me. Ultimately, I'd like to repair the relationships as we had planned to buy a house. He always said he's going to marry me one day and even had a holiday booked for next summer. He booked it, but now I'm clearly not going to be going. Maybe he'll be taking his new girlfriend. Well, that's a while away, so they may not even be together at that point. Please help me as I'm struggling to function through every day, feeling like I have no purpose and like I'm nothing. Have you guys felt like you have no purpose or that you're nothing in a breakup? I think that's a relatable feeling. Um, just because somebody doesn't want to be with you, it doesn't mean that you're nothing. It just means that that person doesn't want to be with you right now. But that doesn't mean that you have lost any value as a person, even though it feels like it. You don't lose value based on somebody else's interest level, okay? As painful as it may be, we all are meant to be born and live our life to its fullest. And we often can make somebody else the star of our own movie. And I used to talk about this concept years ago when I started the channel, but it kept getting ripped off over and over again by people that follow my work, so I stopped saying it. But, you know, it's true. You have to bring the joy to your life, and the people that come into your life are meant to, you know, help it flourish and make it feel better and, and give it additional purpose. But you don't lose any value just because someone doesn't want to be with you that is just a cognitive distortion going through all of the pain of your body, the filter of the pain and the abandonment and the neglect and the hurt and the attachment issues, okay? And, you know, sometimes we put so much priority on our partner that when they're gone and if they're gone, we feel like we have no purpose anymore. And that's kind of what she's saying here, because think about what she said earlier in the email, that everything was about him. Everything was about her, him and our connection. She made him her purpose, and so that's why she feels like she has no purpose right now. So you gotta find a little bit more well-rounded views on who somebody is gonna be in your life and how they're gonna come into your life. You don't wanna make anybody your sole purpose, okay? They can be an extension and part of your purpose, but you really want to make other things your purpose because if someone leaves you, then you feel like you have no purpose anymore. It's very painful. She goes on to say, P.S. He has two children from a previous relationship and I was very close to them. Obviously, I've talked about the Applebee's girl and the daughter that she had. She was very small. I was very close to her. I loved her like my own kid. And that was very, very painful for me. In fact, it may have been more painful than the actual breakup, but that pain was all mixed together, like finger paint. Take a bunch of finger paint and mix it all together. You can't, un you can't separate that. You can't say, I'm hurt because my ex did this and I missed this daughter. It all just feels together, mixed together. Over time, you can slowly sort that out and how the pain is different and you know how the relationship dynamics are different obviously her daughter desperately wanted me in her life and was asking about me all the time which is the reason i cried at applebee's by the way some people you guys laugh at the applebee's story but the reason that i cried at applebee's was not over her was because she told me a story about how much her daughter missed me and she acted it out saying what her daughter said and it was so painful to hear how much she missed me and how badly she wanted me to come home that it really it really just devastated me in that moment so i'm open about that even though some of you guys think it's funny <laughs> and it might be a little bit but it was really difficult to hear 
a three-year-old was basically very devastated, you know, it was like your own kid that you weren't there anymore. All right, a little bit more here. I forgot to mention he changed his pro profile picture of him with his new girlfriend. And this is unbelievable to me. It's so interesting how something so small can feel so huge, right? All he did was change his profile picture. He, she knows he has a new girlfriend, right? But he added her to the picture and it's devastating. I'm not mocking her or making fun because I know what happened to me too. When the Applebee's girl changed her profile picture, the new guy wasn't even in it. And it was still just as devastating. Just to see a new picture, it was like, oh my gosh, you're moving on without me. You're living life without me. You're in the, in the present and I'm stuck here in the past. What else are you doing that I don't know about? Those are some of the things that you think about and worry about. I'm so sorry, I keep forgetting important points. Last one, I promise. I have been in no contact because I have no choice. Since he's blocked me, I have not tried to contact him through friends and family. I don't think he cares at all. Okay, well, the reality is, is that he's excited about the new girlfriend. He's like a drug addict for her. It's intense, it's overwhelming, it's like magical. And so he's not feeling the pain the way that you are. The important thing to understand is, over time's feelings change. Does that mean he'll be back? No, there's no guarantees. And I say that all the time. But do I think he's gonna come back? Yeah, I think it will probably last three or four months with this new woman. Sometimes it goes up to five or six, but usually it doesn't get past that with a rebound. And then he'll probably be back. They had a really serious relationship. He was taking care of her. I mean, she was taking care of his kids. They were living together. He wanted to marry her. But we need to go back in time and look at this earlier comment that she said in the email where she talked about the relationship okay think about it what did she say earlier on about the last year they were together she said the last year we were arguing over silly things but we argued a lot and this created us not being physically close or emotionally you see so the connection got weaker and weaker the sexual chemistry gets squashed. There's less physical connection. There's less emotional connection. It weakens. And so people start to fantasize about other people and dream about other people. And this is a big part of why you want to be the best version of yourself. You can't control who you date, but when you aren't making these mistakes, and you can avoid these things, you're gonna be a lot more likely to have a stronger connection. Because one person that's done a lot of work on themselves makes all the difference in the world. Okay, if two people that are emotionally unaware and haven't done the work on themselves, they're gonna be fighting a lot more than at, if there's a partner who's done a lot of work on themselves, healed a lot of their issues, no longer triggered by a lot of different things, and they're in a relationship with somebody who hasn't done a lot of work. Is it ideal? No, but it's still a lot better and healthier than two people that are emotionally unaware and haven't worked through their stuff. So I think he is gonna come back at some point. Just my instinct. I think he'll be back around again and you need to make him work to get you back. You need to get the information, how he met her, when he met her, what he was feeling leading up to the breakup, how unhappy he was, what was he unhappy about. You also need to reflect and think about those things for yourself and make sure it's good for you too. But you need to get on the same page again to reconnect and see that he's going to make a real effort to make it work and you guys have something healthy again. Don't fret when your ex acts like they don't care. Because at the breakup, they tend to be ice cold. They act like they never cared about you or cared very little about you. They don't show much empathy or kindness or respect. This is just how most people are gonna operate. I know it sucks, but it's just how people tend to be. But if you give them the time and the space, 
They can really reevaluate and see how much you mean to them. And when somebody sees that, it often makes a huge difference in turning a situation around. Okay, so hopefully you found this one helpful. And of course, if you want my help personally, go to my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Also, my creative healing course and my workbooks are only available on my website. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.